Hey guys, Eddie here with Hyperstore.com and today we're going to be talking about diagnosing and replacing ignition coils on a lawnmower. This mower we're going to be looking at today is an old Craftsman and it has a very common Briggs & Stratton 15.5 horsepower. They made them in different horsepowers, but it's an Intec engine, single cylinder. These are very reliable engines and the coils can often last many years, but over time everything electrical degrades and at some point you may need to put a new coil in your engine. So to get to the coil, the first thing we need to do is take off this top cover. It's really simple to do that. Just loosen up these two bolts in the front and there are Torx 40. You don't need to take them all the way out, you just need to loosen them up a little bit. And in the back of the engine we have a bolt that's right here and a one on the other side and those are 10 millimeter. Again, just back those off. Once we've done that, we can pull the top cover straight off. You want to be careful though with your dipstick tube here. You don't want to be jerking on it or damage it. It should, the cover should just lift directly over it like that. And now that we have that cover off, we can see our ignition coil here. Always a good idea before you start messing with it to check your replacement to make sure it is, it is the same. In the case of coils, often they may look a little bit differently just to uh, being redesigned. But the important thing is that the bolt holes here and here line up and that looks pretty good. It is a little bit different looking than the original one, but that is not unusual. So the first thing you're obviously going to want to do if you have a spark problem is to check your spark plug. And you can do that by testing it with the engine. However, I recommend you just try a new known, a known good spark because sometimes they'll spark outside of the combustion chamber but uh, will not spark under load. So it's probably best if you're having a spark problem, the first thing to do is just change the spark plug for a new one. But let's, take, let's go ahead and take it off. So you can take a look at your spark plug to get an indication of what may be going on. If it's very wet, obviously it may not be sparking, it's just flooding itself out. This one has a good color. The center electrode is clean. This is probably a good spark plug, but as I said, your, your best bet is to go ahead and just put a new one in. That often takes care of a lot of problems. So to do the next test, just to check your coil, you can use a spark plug, as I said, and hold it, hold it on the engine like here and turn the engine over. But we're going to go ahead and use the ignition tester. And put the ignition tester into the spark plug wire. Set it on the engine. Now we can try to start our engine and check for spark. Make sure everything is clear. And you may, may not be able to see that, but it was getting good spark. But let's say it wasn't getting good spark. Before we do this first test, I want to say something important. You're going to want a, a spark tester for this. You do not want to leave the spark plug in the engine with it hooked up to the spark plug wire while you do this test. And the reason is, is because if this test is successful, your engine will start and you will not have any easy way of turning it off. So let's get this set up with a spark tester. If you look on the coil right here, you'll see this wire. Uh, it's often underneath, but it's just a single thin wire that you can pull off like that. You want to pull it off. That is actually your kill wire. Now, what happens with that disconnected is that the coil, if it is working properly, should still spark. So you'll know if that wire is disconnected and your ignition sparks, that there's nothing wrong with the ignition coil. The problem must lie somewhere else in the wiring of the system. In your ignition switch, you may have a shorted wire somewhere. Uh, a lot of other things can happen in your ignition system besides the ignition coil that will cause a no spark. For instance, these mowers have a lot of safety features like a seat switch and a, and a uh, brake switch. If one of those is faulty, that also may cause your ignition coil not to spark. So let's now try to turn the engine over with that wire disconnected. As you should have seen there, we were getting good spark. However, let's pretend we got no spark. With this wire disconnected, if you're getting no spark, you're 100% positive that the ignition coil is the problem. So let's just pretend we, got, we had no spark there. And uh, we're going to need to replace our ignition coil. Very simple to take it off. You already have one wire disconnected. And you've got your spark plug disconnected, obviously. We're just going to take off these two bolts.
and they're just eight millimeter. And just pop your ignition coil right off like that. Because of the wide variety of boots that come with these engines, your coil may not come with the boot. If it doesn't, you can just take your old boot off. And I'm just gonna use a little electric contact lube to uh, help the boot go on a little bit easier, but you can use just about anything to do this. Just helps to get the boot on there, like so. Cheer all the way in, like so. And we can put our new coil on. Pay attention to the uh, instructions on the outside of the coil, as you'll see here. So this side will be down facing the cylinder, and this side will be out. And kind of tell that in the direction of the of the uh, spark plug wire as well. We'll get this on here and we'll get our bolt started. And of course we'll put our wire back on underneath. It's a slightly different location, which isn't a problem. So now of course your coil is going to be is going to want to be attracted to the rotor because of mag magnetism. Not a problem. You will need a feeler gauge uh, for this engine. It's uh, the gap between the rotor and the ignition coil is 10 to 14 thousandths. I'm going to use 12 thousandths and uh, in the Description, I'll put a link to a spreadsheet that has uh, that I found useful in the past that has most of the Briggs engines on it and the air gap, which is what this is called, between the rotor and the... I'm going to just put this in here right now on the one side. And what I'm going to do is then I'm going to tighten down that side a little bit to hold it there. I'm not going to tighten it down all the way. I'm just going to tighten this down just... So I think it'll hold there. Then we'll come over to the other side and move it out. Put it on the other side and do the same thing. Tighten it down a little further. Pull it out. Come to the other side. Make sure that we still have that gap there. Tighten it down even more. Come to the other side, do it again. Still got the right gap. And tighten this side down a little more. Make sure our spark plug wire reaches and it's fine. And if we want to check it beforehand, we can get our spark tester back out. And let's try it again. And see what we get. Nice spark, nice strong spark. Get that out of the way and put our spark plug wire back on and might have to adjust our boot a little bit to where it's supposed to be and now we can give it a shot Well, there you go guys i think you'd agree it's a very simple job and even though i didn't need an ignition coil for this mower i think i'm going to leave the hypo one on there because i actually think it was running a little bit smoother with the new coil on it and uh, that's a possibility that old coil may be uh nearing at the end of its life and it may uh it may miss once in a while i hope you enjoy that and uh i encourage you to subscribe to the youtube channel here where we're going to have many more of these uh instructional videos as well as uh, announced promotions and other things coming up at hypostore.com